In this video, you're going to hear about what Tesla's master plan part three really means. There are a lot of numbers and painstaking details, but before breaking it down, we need to understand the bigger picture of what this means not only for Tesla stock investors and fans, but for the people of Earth and our future generations. Nothing in this video should be taken as financial advice or predictions because I am going to show you the mind-bending earning potential of Tesla in the years to come. When we understand the financial implications of what Tesla has just laid out, it becomes pretty easy to see why so many people and even country groups end up mostly all in with Tesla stock. The asymmetric upside is tangible, and it's a company you can feel really good about investing your hard-earned money into to play a small role in furthering Tesla's mission in the world. Simply put, Tesla's master plan part three explains exactly how a sustainable energy economy for the world is possible and requires less investment and less material extraction than continuing today's unsustainable energy economy. There is a clear path to a fully sustainable Earth uh, with abundance. In fact, you could support a civilization much bigger than Earth, than, than much more than the, the 8 billion humans, uh, could actually be uh, supported sustainably on Earth. And I'm, I'm just often shocked and surprised by how few people realize this. I know us humans are selfish and we don't think too much about the people that will be walking in the earth long after we are gone, but they will be here and I think most of us would agree it's our duty at least to some degree to create a sustainable way of living using the resources we've been given so that they don't inherit an unsolvable problem that we ultimately had a hand in creating. So before I get into the fun stuff, I don't want it to be lost on anyone how important Tesla is to the world. I've always seen people that are opposed to Tesla as being a bit ignorant to our current situation. I mean, do they not know that millions of people are dying prematurely solely because of air pollution? As Tesla said, the current energy economy is not only unsustainable, but it's incredibly unhealthy for all of us too. Or how about the number of traffic deaths every single year? Do these people not want a world where this figure is drastically reduced, eliminating the destruction of drunk and distracted driving? Or how about giving certain folks that can't drive the gift of mobility and independence back? Tesla is creating products people truly enjoy that make our lives better, more efficient, cleaner, and safer. Seems like a company that is worthy of our support, not our scorn. There are plenty of other places that energy can be placed. Anyway, that's enough with the ethereal tone. Have a look at these numbers. Here's what Tesla laid out just for the automotive segment of the business. I just extracted these numbers and added some new columns. For numbers I'm estimating, I was very conservative by choice. It's just how I like to forecast when I do. I assumed 20% eventual market share for Tesla in the mid-size segment because we have good real-world data of Tesla already dominating this segment. For the heavy truck segments, I used 15% market share, and then for the other categories where we are yet to have much if any real-world sales data like commercial van and bus, I used 10% assumptions. And you'll see, these all work out to a 12.8% longer term market share for Tesla, which is more than reasonable the way I see it. It's the same story for the estimated average sale prices. These are figures for three to 10 years from now. And of course, some of these sales numbers won't be achieved by Tesla for another five to 10 years plus. Hopefully over that time, Tesla can continually drive down prices making these vehicles more affordable for everyone. For this next section, I wanna be clear, I'm not arguing for the use of a revenue multiple, I'm just using it for illustrative purposes. I do, however, think people need to understand the significance of Tesla potentially generating over $600 billion in revenue from just its automotive business without anything from FSD. In all of 2022, Apple did $394 billion in revenue. And keep in mind, when a company generates this type of investment from customers, it integrates them into the ecosystem that Tesla is creating just like Apple did. It makes customers stickier when you can have multiple products all working together with the same software and from the same company. Think solar roof, Powerwall, and eventual Tesla home HVAC with a heat pump, etc. 
I'd imagine you've all realized this $600 billion in Tesla revenue potential is just from auto. This excludes the entire Tesla energy division as well as all of FSD. I mean, come on now. Tesla's total revenue in 2022 was $81.4 billion. Tesla's market cap at the beginning of quarter four 2022 was 760 billion and ended the quarter at 385 billion. This implies valuation multiples of 9.3 to 4.73 respectively. If we choose the average of about seven and then apply that to Tesla's future revenue potential from the automotive side, that's $4.2 trillion. Given Tesla's current market cap of 586 billion, this would be a potential 7x return from today's levels. Again, just from Tesla Auto with no FSD and no Tesla Energy. This is honestly pretty hard to comprehend. Now look, I'll be the first person to say right now, none of this is guaranteed. This is going to be unfathomably hard for Tesla to do. Manufacturing at scale is very challenging as Elon loves to remind us. There will undoubtedly be more supply chain hiccups and there's always a major risk with our reliance on export partners for semiconductors. There will continually be FUD brainwashing the uninitiated general public into thinking Elon is of Satan's army and that all Teslas are really good for is starting a fire. This is going to matter much more for Tesla to sell 4 million compact vehicles a year to the mass market when so far Tesla really has been fueled or accelerated in large part by early adopters. So yeah, don't go pulling a Jason DeBolt and selling your house because Electrified said I can 7x my money. Nope, 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 not even close. Working as a financial advisor with Edward Jones for four years previously, I actually think most people do not have the proper risk tolerance to be overweight in a company like Tesla and not let it simultaneously disrupt their emotional well-being. But I digress. So I just wanted to put out a reminder in a PSA that Tesla just laid out in detail, a step-by-step -step plan for the entire world to transition to a sustainable energy economy. There are no resource limitations. There are no financial limitations. There are no technology limitations. It's just a matter of spreading the message and Tesla continuing to set the example. If I still have a lineage on this planet hundreds of years from now, I'd like them to be in a world where the sun is generating the power for their house and their cars with the excess being stored in batteries. Without working in the industry, the best way I know how to push that along is to support and be that guy that tells the world about Tesla. And all the while, I see it as a financial opportunity that I may never see again in my lifetime. Wild upside, absurd scale in total addressable markets, unspeakable talent, and much less risk than most other companies I've seen. Tesla has over $20 billion in cash, basically no debt, and they're generating free cash flow every year, which is after all expenses to keep the business growing. So now, as humans interested in Tesla, we just sit back, try to relax, and enjoy the ride as we watch Tesla execute on its plan to change the world and become the most valuable company ever in the process. Now, for the next 60 seconds or so, I want to share the gospel message ahead of Easter weekend since I will not be uploading on Good Friday. I'm doing this because I don't know how long the Lord will give me on this earth. Tomorrow is never guaranteed. Christianity is not about behavior modification and so many people misunderstand it. Simply put, the story is that we are all sinners. In our heart of hearts, if we're honest with ourselves, we know we all fall short of our own expectations for ourselves, and we definitely fall short of a holy God standard. Would you like your thoughts being broadcast to the world every day? Yeah, me either. The good news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ lived the perfect life for us because we can't. He then took the penalty for all of our sin, past, present, and future, in his death on the cross, making a way for all of us to have access to a free gift of salvation. If we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. 
Then, after true salvation, it becomes a lifetime of slowly becoming more like Jesus as we're transformed by the Holy Spirit. We all know that money, fame, followers, success, and status cannot ever truly satisfy our souls. It's because we were created to be in fellowship with the living God of the Bible. When I'm gone, I want to be remembered as the guy that always was pointing people to Jesus and pushing them to at least spend some time exploring eternal matters and the historicity of Jesus Christ. Somebody is right about what happens when we die, and I believe that person is Jesus. I love you all.